गुड इवनिंग टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक रिगार्डिंग द हाइपोनेट्रीमिया हाइपोनेट्रीमिया व्हिच इज डिफाइंड एज अ प्लाज्मा सोडियम कंसंट्रेशन लेस देन 135 मिलीमोल पर लीटर इट इज अ कॉमन डिसऑर्डर ऑकरिंग इन अप टू 20% ऑफ द हॉस्पिटलाइज्ड पेशेंट्स एंड इट इज मोर कॉमन इन क्रिटिकल केयर पेशेंट्स एंड इन एडिशन टू पोटेंशियल लाइफ थ्रेटनिंग कंडीशन हाइपोनेट्रीमिया इज अ इंडिपेंडेंट predictor of mortality in intensive care unit in the geriatric patient and the patient with those with the heart failure and the cirrhosis this disorder is almost always the result of an increase in circulating vasopressin and or increased renal sensitivity to vasopressin combined with the intake of free water but a notable exception in hyponatremia due to low solute intake so hyponatremia can be diagnostically divided into three groups depending upon the clinical history and the volume status like hypovolemic eubolemic and hypervolemic we know that hypovolemic hyponatremia because of renal loss gastrointestinal loss normovolemic the commonest cause is sidh and most importantly sometimes remain quite subtle is adrenal insufficiency hypothyroidism and other important cause is primary polydipsia and for hypervolemic cause the commonest is heart failure and the cirrhosis these are the fluid over state there are other categorization of the hyponatremia also like acute if it exists less than 48 hours chronic if it exists at least for 48 hours and depending upon the sodium concentration it can be grouped into mild moderate and profound profound is less than 125 mmol per liter of sodium also depending upon the symptoms it can be divided into moderate severe when there is a nausea without vomiting confusion and headache is present in the severe there is a vomiting cardio respiratory distress abnormal and deep somnolence seizure and the coma so we know that there are various causes for the hyponatremia those are like divided into like decreased volume of extracellular fluid important is the renal sodium loss and the extra uh, sodium loss are the diarrhea vomiting excessive sodium and those with the increased volume of extracellular fluid as i said previously congestive heart failure cirrhosis nephrotic syndrome and most importantly those with a normal volume of the extracellular fluid having the hyponatremia the important thing we see most commonly in our practice are thyroid diabetics hypothyroidism and adrenal insufficiency these two are sometimes very subtle and they present just with the hyponatremia initially and other important is sidh that is a syndrome of inappropriate secretion of anti diabetic hormone and it is caused by the various disease like malignancy central nervous disease some of the drugs pulmonary condition and other important and the rare causes for hyponatremia are excessive water intake and decreased intake of the fluid so let's see what are the clinical manifestation of this hyponatremia we know that hyponatremia is almost always associated with the hypoosmolality and it is fall in the plasma osmolality that promote the movement of water into the cell and the possible development of the cerebral edema the manifestation of hypotonic hyponatremia are largely related to the dysfunction of the central nervous system and they are more conspicuous when the decrease in the serum sodium concentration is large and the rapid that is a very important and the symptoms are like headache nausea vomiting muscle cramps lethargy restlessness disorientation and depressed reflexes can be observed in these patient whereas the most patient with the serum sodium concentration exceeding 125 mmol per liter are asymptomatic and those with the lower values may have a symptom and more common when when this disorder develop very rapidly so the complication of severe and rapidly evolving hyponatremia include seizure coma permanent brain damage respiratory arrest brain stem herniation and the death and this complication often occur with excessive water retention in patient who are essentially eubolemic hypotonic hyponatremia lead to the entry of water in the brain 
and it result in the cerebral edema and because of the then what adaptation happen actually because of the surrounding cranial limits the expansion of the brain intracranial hypertension develop with the risk of the brain injury the initial diagnostic approach to the hyponatremia consists of a directed history and physical examination as well as a selected laboratory test so we have to concentrate on the some important history and the physical examination why evaluating the patient of the hyponatremia what are those like history of electrolyte fluid loss and the sign of extracellular volume depletion such as decreased skin turgor low jugular venous pressure hypotension other thing like we should take the history of low protein intake or very high fluid intake some other history also important when the patient come with the uh, hyponatremia especially the elderly patient whether they have any malignancy central nervous system disease any pulmonary disease or hiv infection heart failure some of the medication can cause hyponatremia we have to take account most commonly are the thiazide diuretics or thiazide type diuretics mannitol intravenous globulin anti epileptic anti depressant and anti psychotic uh, uh, other important history is sometime we get is the recent history of surgery and we should always look for the peripheral edema or ascites which can be due to heart failure cirrhosis or kidney failure symptom and signs suggestive of adrenal insufficiency in hypothyroidism we should always look for in these patient and also important is the prior episodes of hyponatremia so in addition it is important to evaluate the rapidity of the onset of hyponatremia and severity of the symptom due to hyponatremia because it help in guiding the therapy for the hyponatremia many times the history and physical examination often provide important clue to the cause of hyponatremia but many times these patient present as a very subtle degree of volume depletion and very difficult to differentiate between euvolemic and hypovolemic so the laboratory testing is always required to establish the diagnosis this we have seen in previous slides also the hyponatremia patient can be divided into hypovolemic euvolemic and hypervolemic based on the volume status and then we should go for the urinary sodium if hypovolemic patient with having high urinary sodium more than 30 mg percent the most common cause is a renal loss if the urinary sodium is less than 30 then probably it is because of the extra renal losses like vomiting diarrhea or third spacing of the fluid if there is euvolemia that is patient is not having any edema the important cause is glucose particle deficiency hypothyroidism and the sith that is the most important thing we have to remember and if there is a hypervolemia there should not be any doubt it can be because of nephrotic syndrome cirrhosis and cardiac failure if the urinary sodium is low that is less than 30 mg percent if the urinary sodium is more than 30 mg percent we can definitely search for acute or chronic renal failure so now what are the important management guide as far as the hyponatremia is concerned patient with the severe and moderately severe hyponatremia have a risk of cerebral edema and that always outweighs the risk of osmotic demyelination syndrome so this justify the treatment irrespective of the biochemical degree or timing so we have to treat the severe or moderately severe hyponatremia patient with the hypertonic saline in absence of severe or moderately severe symptom there is a time for diagnostic assessment and cause specific treatment and if hyponatremia is mild and the symptoms are severe or moderately severe accept the causality money in the exceptional cases and before going to the proper approach and we should have a some few line regarding the some important concept hyponatremia means plasma osmolality and the plasma osmolality is usually less than 280 milliosmol per kg what happen normally uh, in hyponatremia normally the kidney will conserve the sodium so the sodium will be less that is less than 30 mg percent but if except in sidh diuretic salt losing or uh, mineral particle deficiency it can be high that is more than 30 mg percent 
so if the adh is activated as in most of the cases the urine osmolality will be more that is usually more than 100 milli osmo per kg so first step in the diagnosis is the getting the sodium done preferably it should be done with the ion specific electrode using the direct potentiometry to avoid the phalaisis sodium level next step is the getting done the serum osmolality serum osmolality should be measured by the osmometer it should not be ideally calculated if osmometer is not available we can do with the help of serum uh, blood sugar plasma blood sugar serum triglyceride and the protein but we have to remember few things for each 100 milligram increase in blood glucose above 100 milligram percent decrease sodium by 1.6 milliequivalent per liter and when the serum triglyceride are above 100 milligram percent for every 500 milligram rise in serum triglyceride falling serum sodium will be about 1 milliequivalent per liter and if the serum protein is above 8 gram per liter for every 1 8 gram per liter rise in the serum protein fall in serum sodium will be about 4 milliequivalent per liter this thing we have to remember uh, when we are interpreting the value of the serum sodium and the osmolality. Then to assess the ADH activity, the normal response to hypernatremia is marked suppression of the ADH and that will result in excretion of the maximum dilute urine and the urine osmolality will be below 100 milliosmol per kg and specific gravity should be less than 1.003. But if the value is above this level, it indicates an inability to excrete the free water normally. And there will be impaired water excretion and it is usually labeled when the urine osmolality is more than 150 millimole per milli osmol, osmol, osmolality per kg in cases of hyponatremia. Third step is to doing the fourth step is to doing the urine sodium determination of source of sodium loss whether it is a renal or the extra renal clinical assessment assessment of the volume status is less accurate than the urine sodium if the initial urine sodium is equivocal it could be difficult to differentiate the true hypovolemia or euvolemia in hypovolemic patient there will be adh will be suppressed and result in urine osmolality less than 100 milliosmol per kg. In euvolemic patient, urine osmolality will remain elevated due to independent ADH release. Other important thing we have to remember, urine sodium will increase in both until the volume status is corrected in hypovolemic patient. Then how to differentiate between the hypovolemic and euvolemic hyponatremia? That is, hypovolemia and euvolemic means you can say between SIDH. In SITA, there will be low uric acid, that is less than 4 mg percent, and the BUN is also low, less than 5 mg percent are seen. And it is mainly because of uh, uric acid is mainly re reduced because of reduced proximal tubular sodium and uric acid reabsorption. And the low BUN is because of stimulation of V1A receptor contribute to urea wasting. Similarly, in hypovolemia, the uric acid and urea level may be normal or high. Some other clue to different causes, if there is a metabolic alkalosis plus hypokalemia, then probably it is because of diuretic use and vomiting. If there is a metabolic acidosis and hypokalemia, then probably there is a diarrhea and the laxative abuse causing the hyponatremia. Other important clue, metabolic acidosis with hyperkalemia the cause of hyponatremia may be primary adrenal insufficiency in the patient without renal failure and normal acid base and the potassium then most likely is the SIDH. Then how to differentiate between hypovolemic and euvolemic this is a very old concept I mean it is doing is quite dangerous administration of 0.9 saline percent saline with the monitoring of sodium and follow up 6 to 8 hours. If hypovolemic hyponatremia, in, in, it will be improved. But in but when there is a euvolemic hyponatremia, it will be uh, worsened. 
So now we'll move to the management. In the management, we have to determine the what is the duration of hyponatremia, what is the severity of the hyponatremia, and also to determine the severity of the symptoms. So these are the three important uh, baseline. We have to classify these hyponatremia. Then we have to decide whether patient will need hospitalization and we should know what is the goal of therapy. Our goal of therapy is usually prevent a further decline in sodium, prevent the brain herniation, relieve the symptom of hyponatremia and most importantly avoid the oral correction. So the definition of uh, like uh, hyponatremia depending on the time as I said in the previously also can be categorized into acute if it exists less than 48 hours, chronic if it exists at least for 48 hours, depending upon the serum sodium, mild 130 to 135 millimole, moderate 125 to 129 millimole, profound and less than 125 millimole and depending upon the symptoms it can be categorized into moderately severe and the severe, in severe it include omitting cardiorespiratory distress abnormal and the deep sonalism and seizure and the coma. And what are the therapies for hyponatremia? We can, depending upon the type, severity, we can give the hypertonic and isotonic saline, fluid restriction, Vaptan, that is a AVP2 receptor antagonist, salt plus furosemide and in rare cases, desmopexin. So, hypertonic saline, which is usually Come as a 100 ml contain 500 and 13 milli equivalent. In each, sorry, in each 1000 ml, it contains 513 milli equivalent. And it is the most reliable method to raise the serum sodium Q3 in acute and the severe hyponatremia. So, hypertonic saline should be given only in acute and severe hyponatremia. Various formulae exist for calculating the initial infusion rate. Most simple formula, infusion rate is equal to patient weight in kg into desired correction rate that is milli equivalent per liter per hour. Alternatively, some of the guidelines say you can give 100 ml of 3% uh, saline bolus, repeat once if there is no clinical improvement, 30 minutes. The rationale for this is the replacement will increase the serum sodium by 2 to 4 millimole per liter and can reduce the brain swelling and intracranial pressure but the most of the time it is given in the infusion rate other way to calculate the how much to in give as an infusion is based on the change in the serum sodium we want and what we are going to infuse and what is the current serum sodium so change in change in serum sodium is equal to infused sodium that is what we are going to offer as a hypertonic saline minus serum sodium divided by total body water plus one and other way it is not though it is a it is also commonly used sodium requirement is equal to total body body water into desired sodium concentration minus current sodium concentration but most commonly advocated method is like uh, is change in serum sodium so few lines for the therapies after weighing the available evidence and the all to real risk of overshooting the mark it is recommended a targeted rate of correction that does not exceed 8 millimole per liter on any day of the treatment so uh, correction should not exceed uh, 8 millimole the remaining within this range the initial rate of correction can still be 1 to 2 millimole per liter per hour for several hours in patients with severe symptoms a recommended indication for stopping the rapid correction of the symptom hyponatremia these are if there is a suggestion of life threatening manifestation moderation of other symptoms or achievement of the serum sodium concentration of uh, usually more than 125 millimole per liter or even lower if the baseline serum sodium concentration is below was below 100 millimole per liter and other option to give the isotonic saline isotonic saline of one liter contain one 
54 millimole of the sodium and it is a treatment of choice for the depletion hyponatremia or that is hyponatremia because of hypovolemia not mainly not for the SID the, it is an initial therapy portion where the clinical side of hypovolemia it is uh, ineffective for the dilution hyponatremia like SIDH in fact it can worsen the volume status in patient with the hypervolemic hyponatremia so this therapy should not be given is hypervolemic hyponatremia and other option of treating the hyponatremia is a fluid restriction and it is a widely accepted treatment for the patient with the chronic hyponatremia so chronic hyponatremia should be treated with a fluid restriction and in SID the fluid restriction should be around 500 to 1 liter per day and the serum sodium increases very slowly even with the severe restriction it is economically favorable not to be used in the hypovolemic patient not practical for the ICU patient and there are some predictor for failure of this fluid restriction what are those if the urine osmolality is high that is more than 500 milliosmol per kg and the sum of urine sodium and potassium concentration exceed the serum sodium concentration other marker is 24 hour urine volume is less than 1500 ml per day and other marker is increase in the serum sodium concentration less than 2 millimole per day in 24 hour on fluid restriction of less than 1 liter per day the other therapy we can offer the patient of hyponatremia is arginine vasopressin receptor antagonist it is a conventional therapy very efficacy and this is the approved treatment for euvolemic hyponatremia and hypervolemic hyponatremia the drugs are like ponivaptan is approved for the euvolemic and hypervolemic hyponatremia in hospitalized patient dose it is given as 20 milligram loading dose over 30 minutes followed by the continuous infusion of 20 to 40 milligram per day therapy is given only for four days and and uh, in this when you are giving this therapy sodium should be measured every six to eight hourly if the correction exceed eight to 12 millimole per liter in 24 hour infusion should be stopped and should patient should be monitored closely other is a uh, tablet form of tolvaptin. It is FDA approved for the treatment of euvolemic and hypervolemic hyponatremia. It is started with the dose of 15 mg per day and it can be given up to 60 mg per day. It is a contraindicated in hypovolemic hyponatremia and vaptans are ineffective when the serum creatinine is more than 3 mg per cent. Other rarely used therapies are urea. It correct the hypoosmolality by increasing the solute through water excretion and decreasing the urinary sodium excretion. It is given the dose of 15 to 60 gram per day and 15, milli, 15 gram per day weekly increment to achieve the normalization of the sodium. It is not a not a, I mean FD approved agent is not easily available and its efficacy is comparable with the Vaptans. Other therapy which is also sometimes practiced are the combination of furosemide and the sodium chloride. Furosemide in the dose of 20 to 40 milligram per day coupled with the high salt intake of 200 milligram per day represent an extension of treatment of acute symptomatic hyponatremia to chronic management of euvolemic hyponatremia. Other just important line regarding calculating the dose of oral salt tablet use the same principle as intravenous isotonic or hypotonic saline 9 gram of oral salt provide a similar quantity of sodium as 1 liter of isotonic saline that is given on 154 mini equivalent but it is without water and 1 gram of oral salt is equal to the 35 ml of 3 percent saline so just to conclude the important thing identify the symptoms severe or moderately severe decide whether it is acute or chronic both acute in origin and severe hyponatremia whether acute or chronic has the same management to preserve the brain function treat moderately severe acute and chronic hyponatremia differently identify rapidly reversible cause of hyponatremia and treat the rapid correction 
an important thing while treating you should identify the patient at the risk of osmotic demyelination these patients are mainly serum sodium less than 105 hypokalemia alcoholic malnutrition and advanced liver disease